Hey guys, Chelsea here from Making Manzanita. Today we are gonna teach you how to build this headboard. So we are starting a new project today. Hopefully this one will be pretty quick and easy. We are building a headboard for Quinn's room. So as you guys know, as we're looking for a new house, we are starting to work on converting some of the rooms to more of a vacation rental um, kind of look. So we are starting with the kids' rooms. You guys know we've been working on Cal's room. So we're gonna move on to Quinn's room and get a queen size bed added to that room. So we're building a headboard and we're working with our friends over at Craig. It's gonna be super cool. It's going to have like cane webbing, like rattan um, on the headboard. So we're basically building a frame that the cane will go into and we're gonna use pocket hole joinery to join everything up. So right now we are starting to cut the wood. This is uh, birch, it's one by four, right? Oh, you have your headphones on, you can't hear me. And this is one by four, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what it looked like, yeah. So we're starting today, and because we're working with Craig, as always with our Craig projects, we will have the free plans available for this so you can build it too. Okay, so I thought I would show you Quinn's room if you haven't seen it recently. Um, we did this room a few years ago now, so I don't show it very much because we haven't done a lot in here since then. Um, but we did add that um, board and batten wall, so I will link to the tutorial for that. I love that wall. We're gonna keep that. Um, and just in case you're wondering, because I get a lot of questions every time I show this wall, the color on there is In The Moment by Baird. It's this really pretty, just like greenish blue, um, color let me open the window so it's a little brighter in here. that is better a little brighter in here now so this room pretty much the bones of it is going to stay the same the walls will stay painted the same um we'll just be taking out all of her belongings and toys and then swapping the crib for a queen bed and i think i'm going to keep the bed kind of in the same location there's i mean logan was thinking about like coming out from the wall. I personally don't like it when I walk into a room and there's like a bed right in my face. Um, so I'd like it to go on a different wall. I don't really think it would work over there because we couldn't, it's too close to the um, closet. So I think that is the best location for the bed. Um, and I think there's plenty of room so that it would be next to the window kind of where hers is just coming out. And I think it'll, look good there so well I mean we'll have to play around with it once we get it in here um, but it's gonna be like a light wood like I said and then a rattan cane webbing on the headboard as well so I think it'll really like pop off of that green wall um, and then I need to think of something to do above the bed um, for decor you can see we have some nails up there we used to have this cool yarn hanging um, that she ended up just it got destroyed um, she ripped it down not too long ago she could finally she was tall enough where she could reach it and it just didn't work um, and then I think we'll probably put like a little nightstand next to the bed and then yeah I th I'm thinking also about building a bench um, when we get done with the bed to go like either underneath the um, window or maybe if we have room at the foot of the bed down here um, and that would be like, just like a good place to put like a suitcase for visitors of course that are going to be staying here i want in every room i want to have a good spot to like drop your suitcase some sort of luggage rack but i thought a bench would be cool so um let me know if you guys have any suggestions on bed location or decor above the bed what i should do with this wall because obviously all that's gonna go um, bench location should it go underneath the window or at the foot of the bed let me know what you think so the first step is to cut the wood according to the woodworking plans which I have linked down below again they are free on craigtool.com we used the miter saw to cut the wood to length and then after you're done cutting just lightly sand all the pieces of wood before assembling all right, so all of the boards have been cut down for the headboard and we are starting to work on the pocket holes. And we, like I mentioned, are working with Craig on this. This is our Craig pocket hole jig 
Um, it's the new newer model. It came out this year earlier, and this is the 720 Pro. So this replaced their old K5 system, if you're familiar with the older systems. Um, and it's really cool. They added a ton of features. I have a whole blog post and YouTube video that walks you through all of the new additions. Um, but my favorite one is that you don't have to adjust the clamp anymore. You just put your wood in and clamp it down and it like automatically sets it based on the thickness of your wood. So we are gonna start on the pocket holes. Another thing I love about the 720 Pro is that it has a hookup for the shop back and it just plugs right into the side of the machine there and that really helps cut down on the dust that is created when you're drilling the pocket holes. So you can see you just put the shop back on and then the dust kind of just goes straight into the shop back. I will do anything to keep our wood shop area a little cleaner and if there's any less dust I can um, create, that's awesome. <laughs> So you can see here, we are just drilling the pocket holes. You wanna just put the stop collar on your drill bit and then drill in the pocket hole jig until that stop collar touches the top and then your pocket holes are done. Pocket holes are done and we're on to assembly. So I wanted to point out this table, which is amazing. We love it. It's got, um, it's obviously from Craig. Um, it's the table top and the base are sold separately but this is the steel base it's on wheels which is handy because you can roll it around your garage um but it's got these clamps built into the table and you can line your pieces up so they're nice and square clamp everything super secure while you're assembling your pocket holes or really anything we've used it for lots of other things too so um definitely recommend this tabletop so the next step is to assemble the headboard frame with pocket holes and we used a quarter, an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws and we used the zinc screws which are made for indoor projects. Then you can sand everything smooth with 150 grit sandpaper and wipe everything well to remove the dust. Next we sealed it with a satin clear lacquer spray and let it dry thoroughly. We actually have the cane webbing soaking in water here in our sink, see if you can see it. It's been soaking for a few hours. You're supposed to soak it for anywhere from 30 minutes to four hours. And the reason you do that, if you don't know, um, wood, when it gets wet, expands, and then when it dries, it contracts. So you want the cane webbing wet, kind of damp, um, when you install it and then as it dries, it will shrink. And so if you're putting it like on the back of a chair or in our case, in the back of a headboard, we're gonna install it when it's damp and then as it shrinks, it'll get nice and tight and very like taut um, as it dries. So you never want to install cane webbing just dry because then it will eventually just get loose. These little pieces are pieces of pine that Logan cut down so they're super tiny. They're about an eighth of an inch wide. Um, and that's what we're using as kind of our guides. You see there, we're stapling that over the cane. So we just have more of um, something to staple to. So we're not trying to line up with these small pieces. So he's cutting that down right now. So what we're gonna do though is put wood glue on the um, piece of wood put the cane into place, pull it as taut as we can. Um, again, it is wet, so it will kind of contract as it dries, um, so it'll get more taut. But we'll get it on there and then staple it all the way around one side at a time. This process was really pretty simple. It did work best with two people. You can see here, I'm holding the camera, so I'm not helping quite as much as I was when the camera was off, but I, tried to hold the cane webbing in place as much as I could and pull it taut while Logan stapled it. And we were using a pneumatic crown stapler, um, but really any type of staple gun that has um, pneumatic power should work for this. You do want that extra power to go all the way through the little pieces and the cane and into the wood. And we just cut off the excess around those support pieces with a utility knife. Okay, so to attach the headboard, which we're done with now, to the wall, we are using a French cleat system. And we made these ourselves just using scrap wood um, 
and then cut it at an angle on the table saw. So you can see they fit together just like this. You attach one to whatever you're hanging and then the other one will be attached to the wall. So it just sits right in here and creates a hanging system. It works great for attaching stuff to the wall that's heavy. We used the same type of system in our office with the pegboard. And if you don't have a table saw or you don't feel comfortable making this yourself, then you can buy metal cleats that are roughly the same size at the hardware store. Um, but we just made this one ourselves. So we're getting it hung up right now. So as a reminder, this is what the room looked like before with the crib. And now this is what the room looks like after we have added the cane headboard with that queen size bed. And you can see here, we did end up building that bench. We went with an upholster bench and we have a full tutorial on that if you wanna check it out. But I just can't get over how great this headboard turned out. I absolutely love it. It was really easy to build and it was actually fairly inexpensive as well. We spent um, roughly $200 on the total cost of the materials. So the wood products were about $100 and the cane webbing and the lacquer were the other $100. And then of course, all of the other supplies we kind of already had on hand, like the pocket hole drill, sandpaper, glue, staples and screws, that kind of stuff. So you can see here, you can kind of see the top of the hangers if you look at the top of it, but otherwise you can't see them at all and it just looks great, I love it. Um, we're gonna be building a nightstand next to go with it and matches, so stay tuned for that and you can see the kids love it too. If you loved this tutorial, I hope that you subscribe to our channel. We share tons of woodworking and renovation tutorials and we'll see you guys next time.